an experiment that will work on the vast majority of you. Think of two simple geometric shapes. That's simple like a square, but think of your own ones. Put one inside the other, and then give them both a colour. You got that? Okay, I was thinking of a circle and a triangle, and the colours were red and green. Did you think of the same as me? If you did, do you know why you thought of the same as me? Enjoy the show. I get asked if my abilities can be scientifically tested. The answer is no, because what I'm doing is not psychic, it's soft science, psychological trickery. I control the conditions, so my testers become my testees. A few years ago in the United States, a girl of nine brought embarrassment to the psychic healing industry with a very simple test to see if psychics really can, as they claim, feel energy from a person. Now, the test was very straightforward. A screen was set up like this with two holes in it. And uh, we've got Richard Robson here, who's a researcher from St. Bartholomew's and London Research Institute. And you've had a look at this and inspected and made sure that I can see neither through the screen nor over the top nor around it. That's right. Great. Fantastic. On one side of the screen sat the healer. That's going to be me. On the other side sat the young girl. The healer would place his hands through the holes and the girl would place her hand above one of the healer's hands. And all the healer had to do was say whether he thought the girl's hand was above his left hand or his right hand. The results when the psychics did this was 44% accurate, which is slightly worse than you'd get from guessing. So bravo to the psychic healing community. Um, I'm not psychic, but I will do my best to get better than 44%. Okay. So now I'm sitting down. If you jumble yourselves up, so you're in a different order. And when you're in position, the first person, please, put your hand above one of mine and say, ready when you're done. Ready. Okay. Now, I wiggled my right hand on purpose. That should have put you off going there and made you go over to the left-hand side. So I would say left for the first one, correct? Correct. Next, please. Ready. Now, you've just seen a left, so I would say you would go for right, correct? Correct. correct. Next, please. Ready. Okay, you now want to break the alternating pattern that I just mentioned, so you would go for right again, correct? Yes. Next, please. So this is number... How many of you are there left? Six? Okay, next, please. Ready. Great. Now, you just heard me say left, so you wouldn't do that. You'd go for right, correct? Correct. Next, please. Ready. Left. Next. Correct. Ready. Left again. Next. No. Ah! OK, I'm... All right, OK, I'll get you back later. All right, next. Ready. That's left. Yeah. Correct. Thank you. Next. Ready. Oh, left again. Correct. Next. Ready. Left. Correct. This is the last one, I believe. Above one of mine. Ready. You're going to do it left again. Yeah. Correct. Yes, fantastic. <laughs> Is that 9 out of 10? Yes. Can I get that one person back that I messed up with? The one person back. Let me try this again with you. Ready. OK. Place your hands a little closer to mine, please. Closer. Don't move. That one. That's right. Ah. Oh. Strong hands, you've been used to fighting a corner, you've got older brothers and sisters, yeah? And, and you're sporty. Um, I was going to say football, I, I, think you, I think you'd be a football fan, but it's, I know, it's, it's golf. Yeah, it's golf, and uh, you work with computers. That's right. And that's something else that's, uh, is, that, is that vinyl, something, records, vinyl, you work in a record shop or something? And there's something else. <sighs> it's dogs. <sighs> you've got dogs. Terriers. Three. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. He got it right that um, football supporter, golf, played golf, um, had three terriers uh, with parents. Uh, used to DJ uh, years ago. Um, <laughs> don't know how he did it. Amazing. I don't think it's science, I think it's an art. Or it's something that science hasn't yet been able to understand. Must be mind control. <laughs> Thank you.
A good communicator affects our physiology. The power of voice can entrance us, even induce or remove pain. I came to the old operating theatre at London Bridge. You're all medical students? Yeah. yeah. Have you been here before? Yeah. It is a remarkable place. This is where they used to perform amputation. Amputation. Imagine yourself. Imagine delirious, yourself. Delirious. Delirious. With fear. With fear. There's no anaesthetic. Just hold you down. Hold you down. Hold you down. And hope that you just pass out before they'd finished. So I want to try something with all of you. And while it may be a bit disturbing, I can absolutely guarantee your safety. If you don't want to do this, that's absolutely fine. You can say so. But if you do, once you're in, you're in. And there's no going back. All right? Are you all happy to do this? Yeah? yeah? yeah. You don't want to do it? No. Sure? Yeah. Absolutely fine. I'm going to make your way back out there. So let's begin. It's very easy to get an idea in somebody's head. Do you study dentistry as part of the course? No. No? The whole area of toothache is an interesting one. But often what happens is the nerves at the actual base of the tooth, like right, you know, right in there, right where the base of the tooth would be, go bad, right in there. You must have had really bad toothache. The first sort of tingling feeling that you get, I mean, what's it like? How do you describe the sort of a toothache pain? Constant pain. Yeah? yeah. You're feeling that now, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. What's that like? Sharp down straight across. Mm -hmm. You're genuinely feeling that now? I'm genuinely feeling it. Mm -hmm. Straight down. Sometimes it's the sort of thing that can spread. You're getting it in your gums or is it in the teeth itself? Yeah, it's also everywhere. Yeah. It's down your jaw. Right down your jaw. Mm. And when it gets worse, and it gets worse, and then suddenly it's gone. And gone. And you don't feel anything at all. It's like it's anaesthetized. You feel nothing. Nothing at all. Like in the back of your hand there. It's like a blueness. It's like a blueness in the hand. But no, nothing. <laughs> Try pinching it. What's it like? Nothing. Clammy and not responsive at all. I imagine you can probably feel your wrist, can you? Or you can feel your arm. Yeah. You really not feel that? Seriously. Would you be happy to, you know, bash that or twist it really hard or stick something through it? Yeah. Would you be happy to stick a needle through it? Yeah. Would you be happy to do that now? If I gave you a needle? Yeah. Just to show us that really is dead. You'd be happy? Yeah. <laughs> These are sterilised hypodermic needles. You want to hold that in that hand. You really can't feel that, can you? Seriously. Absolutely dead. It's just like a piece of dead meat on the table. It's like sticking a needle through a piece of dead meat. Go and just push it through. Push it right through and out the other side. Right through. Oh, my. Uh... You can't feel a thing, can you? No. How does it make you feel? Weird. That is... Weird. Just a dead hand. Have you ever seen anything like that before? No. And you're not bleeding? You're completely happy with that? Completely happy with that. You pull it back out? Gently? No blood. No bleeding. Now, the feeling is going to come back in your hand now. There'll be no pain. You find you can start moving your fingers now and moving your hand. It's weird. I saw the needle there, 
and then it just came back out the other side and thinking, now this really should be hurting, but just nothing at all. When you took the needle out, you just couldn't see anywhere that the needle had been. I was really surprised. I thought, you know, there'd be some blood at least. It was an amazing experience. Impressed. Very, very impressed. What's your name? Kerry. Kerry, thank you so much. After the break, some... find out what this student did for a cynical scientist at the Tate Gallery, which caused her to say this. I've never done anything like that before, so it must be Darren, but I, d I just don't know how he got me to... to to do that. It's a chain of taxidermy stores. And find out how I subliminally influenced two creatives from an advertising agency and ruined their day. I just thought, oh, I can't believe it. You have half an hour, gentlemen. The easiest way to let a scientist assess what I try and do is to let him experience it firsthand, which of course robs him of his objectivity. Here at the Tate Modern, where art meets science, we have Richard Robson from the Bartholomew's in London Research Institute. Thank you so much for joining us. And a group of hard-nosed, tough and cynical students who have given us some of their time. Thank you so much indeed. Um, now, Richard, come and sit with me. Let me uh, check a few things with you. You have brought with you some objects from home. I asked you to bring some objects, to put them in your briefcase, to not let anybody see them when you got here, not to tell anybody what they were, to keep them absolutely 100% secret and private. Have you done that? Yes. And you've got them here with you? Right. That's right. Superb. I'm going to look the other way while you take one of those out. Change your mind as many times as you like until you can get one. Hold it in your hands. Close the briefcase. Put it back down again. And then I'll turn around. All okay. right? Right. So I won't look at you, Pat. I will look over here. You done that? Yes. Are you holding it in your hand like this? Is yes. it safe for me to turn around? Yes. Okay, let me explain exactly what I want you to do. Um, rest your hands just there on my hand. All right. This sounds very strange. What I want you to do is to look down at your hands, imagine they're made of glass. Are you nervous? I can feel that. Don't worry, just relax. Imagine your hands are glass. You can look through and you can see the object. Good. Now look at me. This could be something that you've just picked up on the way out. It could be something that you've, you, you know, that really has some kind of uh, sentimental value to you. I don't know. I mean, how long have you had it for, roughly? Three years. About three years or so. Okay. I mean, I'm just getting the impression as you're sat there and talking, it's something you feel a little sentimental about, just from the way that you're guarding it a little bit. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if it's something you were given or something that you picked up yourself. And the slight relaxation in your shoulders told me it's something you picked up yourself. So it's not a gift. So if it's, it's not a sentimental thing in the sense that it's attached to a person you love, it's something, some silly thing that's for yourself that maybe you find lucky or that has some, and you <laughs> careful not to give too much away, but you are grinning there, so it's something lucky. All right. Just look at me and just think about what it is. Just see it in your mind. See it in your mind. What is it? It's something that you've got from holiday somewhere, that you've been traveling, and it's from somewhere in Europe. You wanted to say something beginning with a B, I think. And it's like a coin or some small little memento that to you is a, has become like a lucky talisman. I want to see what it is. What is it? It's a one guilder from the Netherlands. From the Netherlands. All right. It was the B I was getting, but I don't know what that was. Excellent. But I want to try something else with you. This time I want you just to think of something from home. Okay. Something you haven't brought with you. So it can be any size you like, anything you like. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. One of our students are. So have a look up and down them and choose one. Um, maybe the girl with the white t-shirt. Come and join us. What's your name? Kerry. Kerry, thank you so much for Come and have a seat. Thanks. All right. Whatever this thing is you're thinking of now, stick with it. Don't change your mind. Kerry, you are going to look at Richard and you are going to tell him what he's thinking of. Sounds impossible and you won't know how you're going to do it, but you just are. And this is also something that you can do over and over again and freak people out with. But for the 28 million people watching this, whom I don't want going out and doing this tomorrow, we're going to turn the sound down while I give you a few simple instructions on how to do it. OK? So here's what you do. Actually, could you stick your fingers in your wrist? Can you take that for me? You're going to look him right in the eye and you just talk when I tell you to start and you just, whatever comes out, you start to get ideas and you just let them slowly form and don't worry if you get it wrong. Do nothing, to give nothing away. Okay? Okay. Relax a bit. Excellent. 
Start now. I see, um... I think colours. Say whatever comes to mind. It's something of his. It's something that he would, he would use. I'm looking at his tie, and okay. it's making me think of that colour. I don't know if that's colour of the object, or I'm just looking at the okay, tie, right. but I, I see, just, just see that colour. What comes to mind? Keep talking. Something round. Um, something, something you'd play. How big? It's not big, but not, not tiny. How might he use it? He, he'd either play with the object or wear it. Just to, those to, to, to do with playing something. Okay. Some sport. That. Okay. Just write it down. Whatever you think it is, you seem to be getting some specific ideas. I just write it down. Don't let him see. Can you see this thing clearly in your mind? Yes. Yeah. Don't say anything. Let's not hear anything yet. You got something close to it? Yeah. I think yeah. So. Okay. Don't show him yet. All right, Richard. Just be absolutely honest, please. It doesn't matter if all this is wrong, it doesn't matter. Just tell me, what were you thinking of? What were you imagining from home? My black baseball cap. OK. <laughs> I, got, I got a baseball cap. <laughs> I, I saw blue, though. I did see blue. I don't, I don't know why. I just had... I had... <laughs> <laughs> Dark I, blue? <laughs> I've never done anything like that before. So it must be... Darren, but I, d I just don't know how he got me to, to, to do that. Hit the nail on the head in black and white, just saw exactly what I was thinking. It's very surreal. I invited two members of MBA, an advertising agency, to a secret location to propose an unusual task. Those who work in advertising are masters of persuasion. They subtly weave their images and slogans into our daily lives, knowing that we will register so much unconsciously. And then we walk into a supermarket and feel a sense of familiarity with a product we think we've never heard of. Millions of pounds a year are spent on it. It's brilliantly calculated, and we all fall for it. So I thought I'd turn the tables on the advertising experts. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Tony, yes? Yes, that's right. And Martin? Yeah. Hi, I'm Darren. Let me get down to explaining exactly what I want you to do. Imagine that I'm opening a chain of stores selling a product, something I have a particular interest in. Your task is to come up with a poster advertising that store. And that poster must include the company name, whatever you decide that may be. It must include a strap line, some sort of slogan, and some kind of logo as well, some kind of visual image. Now, the idea is you've only got half an hour to do this, so you've got to really work with your first instinct. So at the moment, you've got no idea what you're going to do, correct? No. Excellent. That's I'm also okay. going to give you this. I've had a few design ideas of my own. Okay. I want to leave this untouched. We'll come back to that later. All right? Are there any questions? What's the product? What's the product? Very good question. A mm. uh, passion of mine since I was a toddler. It's a chain of taxidermy stores. Mm. Let me uh, pop the pussycat on the envelope so it remains untouched. You have half an hour, gentlemen. Okay. Good luck. Great, thanks. thanks. Right, let's go for it. To get it stuffed is a start. Right. Animal yeah, hospital. Yeah. The ones who didn't make it. No, that's probably just stupid. Isn't it? To do with wings. Our creatures great and small. Quality that says, like, nice, positive type of yeah. animals. Animal heaven. Where animals go. Animal heaven, that's good. Graveyard. Animal yeah. heaven's good. Animal heaven. Where the best animals go to. Loads of clouds with animals on them. Yeah. Gates, Harps, pearly gates. Dates. Bear playing a harp. Yeah. Only the best Zoo. get in. Only the best get into where. Yeah, yeah. Where dead animals go oh. to live. Where the best. best. It's the best place for dead animals. <laughs> <laughs> it's simple. Time up, gentlemen. Okay. I can't wait to see what you've done. Uh, come and show me. Okay. And Tony, before yeah. we do this, can you take the uh, envelope I gave you earlier? Okay. And can you please. Vouch for us here that no one's been anywhere near it. He's been under a dead cat. No one's touched it. That's right. That's the truth. That's, that's, that's the truth. truth. Keep hold of it. Come around here. Now, before we have a look <clears> at it, just tell me what was it like? We started off thinking about the name. I thought that was the, we thought that was probably yeah, the best thing to the do. Starting point. Sure. And then take it from there. Really, we banged out a lot of ones that were probably completely stupid, and then got down to the ones that were slightly stupid, mm -hmm. and then we kind of that went back yeah. and forth for a bit, and then. 
kind of got something we liked and developed yeah. it. Can I have a look? Sure. Sure. Is this it? Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a bear with a liar. So it's animal heaven, the best place for dead animals. And it's obviously, you, you'd see that it was stuffed. How did you come up with the name Animal Heaven? We had the idea of the pearly gates of heaven being a zoo gate. Zoo gates as the gates of heaven, that's yeah, interesting. I.e. Yeah. sort of all the animals that are dead are in a dead zoo, if you like, in heaven. And then we just kind of thought, well, it's kind of nice, but it's a bit twee. We wanted to make it a bit funkier. And then we mm. thought a hard playing bear just answered the, <laughs> answered the brief. It's fantastic. I do want to show you my own ideas from beforehand. OK. Um, I don't want to touch. Would you open them for me? Sure. And the winner is... I think you'll find this interesting. Okay. Go to the envelope. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Well. All right. Not a million miles away. Let me put this up there. Hang on to that. It's... Yeah. It's a heart-playing bear. Yeah. God. You've gone... For these angel wings here, were you thinking of angel wings or bird wings? Yeah, uh, well, uh, yeah. they were kind of a combination. You do them a lot better than me. This, uh, this was the same thing. I was thinking angel wings there. You've got animal heaven. I got creature heaven. Yeah. So you're, where the best you're a bit off there, then. A bit off there. <laughs> yeah. well, where the best dead animals go. Did you put blessed place with dead animals? Wow. Very similar. I had the idea of a zoo gate on there. It, it was hard to we leave out. We didn't want to overload it. Was, it. it was hard to leave out, but sure. it just wasn't. It was just a bit too much. Can I see your other... Um, the other one you were talking yeah, about. Put it right? yeah, 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 it's just before there. Is yeah. it very different? Well, well, it's just just the gates. Yeah. Oh, gentlemen, please. We're drawing quite similar. <laughs> Look at that. This, this was the image I was thinking. I've done it there in the background because this to me was the more striking image. And interestingly, you abandoned this for this one. This was yeah. obviously well, the first. On your mind. The first bear I drew looks exactly like that one, actually. It yeah. did, yeah. The oh, first bear you drew. Yeah, I'll show, show you on the, on the notes. Exactly show me, like that, show yeah. me. What have you got? Well, that, this is scary, really. But, um, Oh, look at that. Yeah. Look at that. You've got the cloud, you've got the blue. If you knew the amount of effort we've gone into making this work, you'd be mm. absolutely flabbergasted. But for now, it's comforting to know that you're just as susceptible to subliminal persuasion as the rest of us. Thank you very much for <laughs> helping you. us out. Tony, Thank you. Martin. Pleasure. Take care. Thank you Thanks. very much indeed. Bye -bye. I think I'm quite cynical. When I saw the bear and I saw a cloud, first of all, from, you know, behind the paper, I thought, hang on, he's close here. And then when, when we saw the rest of it, I you know, couldn't believe it. I uh, immediately thought, oh, I'm gutted. I, <laughs> I could see that it was folded, and I just saw the bear's foot hanging over the cloud with the harp. Yeah. And I just thought, oh, I can't believe it. Yeah. You know, uh, it was yeah, gutted. How embarrassing. But now, now I think, oh, fantastic, yeah. you know, I'm over the moon. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, we're pleased for him, you know. Yeah. Yeah, he's... It's yeah, as long as, you know... If he comes out of this looking good, then that's, you know, <laughs> that's always the main thing. <laughs> to see how we did it, watch their taxi journey again. I put a spell on you. Cause you're mine. Do, 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 do. You better stop the things you do. I'm in shock, I think. There's something wrong with my body. That's what it is, my hand's not, not medically correct. <laughs> it's gonna take me a long time to recover tonight, I think. <laughs> I can't make any rational explanation. We're big fans. In each episode of this series, I will offer an applicant a blind choice of either a pleasant experience, a treat, or a darker trick. They won't know which one they've chosen, and they may not know how or when it will happen to them. All the applicants responded to advertisements. These are the six people that I've selected. They just don't know it yet. Welcome to Trick or Treat.
Tonight's applicant is Stephen. He is something of a conformist who lives an ordered life and, like most of us, is used to doing what is told. Using coercion and suggestion, we're going to look at the fine line between sanity and insanity and let Stephen step for a brief while over that line. And his journey to madness starts in this black cab. After having dinner in North London, Stephen has called this taxi to take him to a nearby underground station. Where are you going to, mate? However, the driver is an actor who has been briefed to ignore Stephen and drive 10 miles in the opposite direction towards this alleyway. There he'll find more actors who have been briefed to unnerve him and test his reaction to people outside of his normal and safe world. Hello. Excuse me, where are you going? All of the windows are sealed shut and the doors are locked. Hello. Can you stop the car, please? If you don't talk to me, I want to call the police. Although we have complete control of the taxi, we didn't count on him calling the police. Please, please. Hi, I'm stuck in a taxi and this guy, I don't know where he's taking me, but he won't, I've been knocking on the, on, the, on the glass door and he won't talk to me. And he's supposed to have dropped me off at a tube station and I don't, I, we're not going to any tube station, we passed loads. And uh, Steve. Steve, Steve. Oh, there, there's, a, there's a thing on the window where the driver is and it says it's the number of this cab, so it looks like the number's been removed. There's nothing there, there's nothing there. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. No, I don't know where I am, I don't know where I am. This is really, really not good. <laughs> it's taken me somewhere, isn't it? This is an emergency. <laughs> oh, God. It's taken me down a dark alley. Fuck it, now, where are we going? Where the fucking hell is it taking me? I don't know. What the hell is going on? Oh my god. <laughs> fucking hell. What is. There's loads of nutcases outside. Fuck. There's loads of weirdos outside. Shit. What's going on? Oh my god, it's, I know what's going on. It's Darren Brown. Oh my. <sighs> Hello? I'm on the phone to the police at the moment. Do hang up? Um, they want to speak to someone. Hello? Yeah, I'm, I'm, of course, of course, of course. No, it's very embarrassing and I'm sorry. Right. Take care, cheers. volunteered to be on the show <laughs> yes. a little while ago <laughs> and we'd love to use you. Okay. Alright, let me explain to you how the show works. Right. You get to make a choice of one of these two cards. Alright. One of them says trick and one of them says treat. Right, okay. Now if you pick the card that says treat then what happens to you will be something nice. And if you pick the one that says trick then it won't be. Okay. Okay. Do you want to play? Yep, go for it. Okay, great. I think I might be the police again. Do you want to cut them off? Shall I? Yeah. Okay. Here's your contract you need to sign. This right. just allows us to do anything we like with you. <laughs> What's your name at the bottom? Right. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. One man's sanity okay. is another man's insanity. One man's treat is another man's trick. So you're going to choose one of these two cards. Um, just choose one by putting your finger on one or the other. That one there. Stephen's taxi ride is just the start of a longer and stranger journey that will reveal what could so easily exist in all of us. Thanks for that. Right. Speak to you soon. Okay, thanks. More of Stephen's story later. The idea of vibrational energy systems existing within our bodies that can be triggered by a variety of crystals is a mainstay of New Age thinking. Do you believe in, or you know, what are your thoughts on crystal energy, crystal healing power, that kind of thing? What are, what are your kind of thoughts on that? Um, I'm kind of open on it. It wouldn't be my natural no, no. inclination. But you clearly are sort of in your heart quite sceptical about it as a. It, 
it's n it would never have been my port of call, no. no. I sort of don't believe in it, or certainly don't believe in a lot of it. Um, but I think, like a lot of these things, there are little nuggets of truth in it that have sort of got blown out of proportion and, and exaggerated. And with uh, crystals and so on, what it's based on is the scientific fact, if you like, that we are all molecular beings, we're all made of molecules which vibrate. Crystals also vibrate, and they vibrate at different and discrete frequencies, and sometimes those frequencies will work in harmony with or against other things that are vibrating, like us, for example. And mm. you get people that can't wear quartz watches, and it's because their own vibration, if you like, um, is sort of overwhelming this tiny bit of quartz, which is too close to their own vibration and work, working against it somehow and their watch consistently stops. But what's interesting about it is that you can use it the other way. If you take a larger piece of quartz, mm. you can use it to override or interfere with the person's own kind of energy flow, if you want to use that word. So look, I'll show you this because it's really interesting. Take your two fingers, like that, as if you just lift up the, uh, lift up the, the mug. Perfect, and put it back down again. So it's relatively comfortable. It, it, it's not the odd angle, maybe. Yeah, yeah that was all right. All yeah. right, okay, good. So, I want you to do the same thing, but I'm going to put one of these on the back of your hand, so you might need to just sort of try and get the back of your hand flat. That's it, perfect. Okay. Okay, so just keep, keep it on the table for now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, the other aspect, what I think makes these things work, especially when you start getting into the healing end, is people's expectation that certain things yeah. are going to happen, and you kind of create that yourself. Yeah. So that psychological aspect of it is important. I want you to look at the quartz, and you listen to me, and just imagine that hand becoming weaker and weaker. And as you do that, as you keep focusing on the quartz, you genuinely try and lift the mug, while at the same time, you focus on that kind of energy sapping out of your hand. Really try, just with those two fingers. Go on, just try. Really heavy, but keep. What's happening as you're trying? Ridiculous, man. That's fucking. Okay. Yeah. Heavy. I'm gonna drop it. I'm gonna drop it. Really heavy? Yeah. That's ridiculous. So, what was just as you were doing that? What did that feel like? It felt really heavy. It felt. Okay. Stupidly heavy, yeah. And you're genuinely trying? You're not just helping me? I was me trying. Look, no, it. no. I don't want to help you at all. No, no. No. So you're genuinely trying? I was, I was exerting the same amount of pressure. Try this. It works if I stand up. Stand up. Um, I'll stick with the same stone. So what you're going to do is yeah. you're going to put this in the other hand. Are you right-handed or left-handed? I'm left-handed. That's what I thought. Okay, so hold that there. Hold it. Right. Okay. So with your other hand, yeah. you're going to hold on to just the end of the pencil there. Okay. Right? Now don't lift it yet. Just okay. hold it there just like that. Just hold it? Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, now try not to move. Okay. Okay, so what you'll get is a warmth coming from this, first of all, that will move along here and along this hand of the pencil. So it'll take a moment, and you have to kind of imagine it a little bit, but mm -hmm. it's a sort of, again, it's just that sort of weakness. Just gently, just, just try and lift the pencil straight up. <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> try again? Stupid. <laughs> Nothing? No. You try, you're genuinely trying? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm lifting a pencil. Try again? Should, how hard can it be? <laughs> nothing. No, nothing. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Take a look at that. I'm sweating. You are, no, you are. You're absolutely... Is that sexual energy? Yeah. Right. Yeah, it is. Brilliant. Quite complicated. There were many, many different layers That's going mental. at the same time. Um, there is a form of crystal that we carry around with us all the time um, that we don't really think of as crystals, but it works on crystalline energy. And What, have you got this mobile phone? Have you got one on you? Yes. Okay. Now we've got your number, mm -hmm. so um, mm -hmm. can you put that? I, oh, it's one of those fancy. Can you put, you put it to settings for me? I've got a message. It's from me. Oh, are you sweating? <laughs> That's. Uh, oh no, there we go. Yeah. All right, great. Has it got Bluetooth on it? These Bluetooth? No. I don't mm, think so. no. no. Okay. Well, I Can't show you this because I'm I'm not supposed to know about this myself, so I don't want you knowing. Okay. All right. Okay. Take your crisps and sandwich and just hold them like that. Okay. Okay? I'm going to hold this on the back of your neck. Mm -hmm. and in a moment, I'm going to get somebody to call you, all mm -hmm. right? What you'll feel mm -hmm. is a... If I f you should get like a prickling feeling mm -hmm. in the back of your neck, all right? Okay. It's, it, it is safe. It's only going to be for like a minute or so, all right? When I tell you to, you're going to try and lift the plate up. Can we, uh, can we call, please? Thank you. Can you feel that? Yeah. Okay. Focus on the plate. Mm-hmm. Focus on it. Try and lift.
Try and lift it. Uh, yeah, yeah, keep trying, okay. keep trying, keep trying, yeah. alright? Just okay. keep focusing, I'll take okay. this, just keep focusing, keep trying to lift it. Right up, tug as hard as you can, <laughs> keep going. Excellent, thank you for that. You'll yeah, get a few sort of malignant headaches the next couple oh, of days, cool. and then, uh, <laughs> then it will go away. Thank you ever thank so you much. much. Everything I told you about crystals and mobile phones was yeah. rubbish, alright? But right. I did need you to believe that while we were doing it. Yeah, so, of course, uh, I'm happy to believe that. Excellent, yeah. please okay. do. Thank, thank you very, very much indeed. All I can say is I was genuinely surprised that I thought, well, all right, I might be doing a bit of this, but I'm not fucking doing all of it, because that feels like lead now, you know. It's either true that I'm stopping it, or he's doing something mental, or we're both do uh, you know, I don't know. Stephen received a phone call telling him to be at Trafalgar Square at midday. His ordeal in the taxi will have already placed him in a state of paranoia, so it should take only a few extra pushes from me to take him from a balanced lifestyle to temporary lunacy. Take me down a dark alley. Fucking hell, where are we going? There's an actor handing out maps to the passing public. Map to madness? Each one contains directions to a room where a machine that I've designed awaits. So far, no one has followed the map. I believe Stephen's personality will impel him to follow the directions that will lead him towards the room. The process requires him to be fully alert, so I've arranged for his journey to be unsettling. No, can you spare some change, please? No, sorry. Please, I'm in. No, sorry. Come on, man, please. Sorry. On the table, there are instructions that tell Stephen to sit in the chair and put on the headphones. This reprocessing technique is the final trigger in sending Stephen temporarily insane. They say that if you put an infinite number of monkeys and typewriters in a room, you would end up with something amazing, and of course a lot of monkey poo. In America, I wondered if I could get a bunch of bankers to come up with a numerical equivalent. Uh, thank you very much for coming out and doing this. Uh, let me explain what uh, we're going to do. There's a, a popular game we have in England, I don't know about you guys here, of guessing how many pieces of candy there are in a jar. Does that ring any bells to you guys? Yeah. Or sweets as we call it. That's, uh, excellent. Okay, well that's, this is what we're going to do. You will work in different areas of kind of accounting and maths related, number related work, which is kind of, these are the skills that I want to draw on for what we're going to do here. So, uh, bearing that in mind, can we just nominate one of you who uh, I'm just going to put to one side for the moment and uh, who's going to have a a special job. <laughs> okay, let's just get, let's get nicely pushed forward. Can we get a mic on you? Let me explain uh, what your role is here. There's a board and sort of easel just over there. You're going to be writing down people's estimates. Um, the reason why we're doing it like this is that if any of you see or hear what other people are choosing before you, it does tend to influence you and it makes you sort of gear your own estimations towards what other people uh, have said prior to you. So please do so quietly and don't come back and discuss your figures with anybody else. Amy, you also get to go first, all right? So you please come and have a look at the jar. Take a moment and have your guess. When you've got a number in your head, just let me know. Have you got something? Yes. Great. If you head over here for me, then. This will be our writing area. You take the pen. Put your own number at the top. Okay. You'll be person number one. Okay. 
Great, fantastic. Let's go with the lady there in the middle. Great, and off you go, and uh, somebody else step forward, thank you. Everybody done it? Okay. Quite a wide range of numbers. Um, it's a very deceptive thing. The correct number of sweets in the jar uh, is 136. It is only 136. Nowhere near as high as it, as it looks. Partly because there's something else in the jar, which I'm going to take out in a second. Anybody get close to that? <laughs> oh, somebody got 100. Who got 136? Was that you? Oh, congratulations. Just, just get a mic on you. Uh, what's your name? Rebecca. Rebecca, come forward for me. Thank you, Rebecca. Good. Well, first of all, congratulations. Thank let's, you. Let's just come around here. There is a uh, couple of other things going on here. First of all, I'm interested in the sort of the psychology of this and how people make their estimations and how they do this. And there's a certain sort of person that tends to do this better than other sorts of people. And also, I got a chance just to have a look at you guys earlier. Right? Just if you t take the lid off. Sorry, do you want to just grab all of that for me? Um, thank you. Um, if you reach inside there, and just you need to reach in the sweets a bit and pull out, there's a uh, sort of a scroll. Great, you want to open that up for us? Now you've got to read this out in your nicest, clearest voice. From the top. There is a certain type of person who I think will estimate the correct number with the greatest accuracy. Firstly, it will be a woman, not a man. I also expect this to be someone who works in the field of brokerage. Her and dress is, sense... Is, is that true? Yes. Okay. Her dress sense will suggest a sharp mind, simply simple, simple colors, and probably bright colored shoes. <laughs> Jewelry will be silver and uncluttered, maybe a large ring. There will be at least one other accountant in the family, probably on her mother's side. From looking around the group, I think it will be the girl with the ponytail and the green army style top. Um, the, um, <laughs> are those things right? They're all correct. Yes? Yes. Accountant, another accountant in the family? Yes. Mother's side? Or? Yes, my mother. You got a cat as well. Yes. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, I, I didn't, didn't want to write that in case that was wrong. <laughs> well, fantastic. And look, look, for the record, we didn't speak to you beforehand and ask you to no, tell you how many not. were in there or ask you to do any of that. And you haven't told us any of these things either? No, I have not. Fantastic. Okay, well, thank you uh, very much I'm indeed. I'm quite but, impressed. Well, <laughs> thank please you. Please do it, Rebecca. The rest of you don't feel despondent, even though some of your estimates were <laughs> terrible. Um, <laughs> There is there's another side to this which interests me, which is, um, for those of you that, uh, well actually taking all of you as a group, aside from one person who got it spot on, which I wasn't imagining you'd get it dead on, but you did, which is, which is sensational. Um, could you just bring the board back over? Let me get, a, get you a calculator, you're going to need this. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so, we're going to take what you, as an overall group, would have done if you were one entity. If we saw you as one entity, what estimate you would have come up with. So we're going to take the mean of the numbers that you've got. So if you take the calculator there for me, you're going to add up all of those numbers and uh, tell us the grand total. That sounds about right then. Okay, so the total is 2,856. Um, and there are 21 people here, so do you want to divide that number by 21? So we'll end up with the mean of the group. 136. 136, which is what you got. Yes. Which is the correct amount of sweets in the jar. <laughs> so, so, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. <laughs> One, two, three. It was unbelievable that he knew everything about her. Just like dead on, because I know her, and it's just right on. It's unreal. I'll feel very comfortable estimating anything now, uh, since I know I might actually get it right. 135, 136.
Stephen's voyage into the unknown started when he was kidnapped in a taxi. If you don't talk to me, I want to call the plane. Then there was an irrelevant choice with only one outcome. Hello. Two weeks later, he received Hello. instructions to go to Trafalgar Square. <laughs> a map and his curiosity have led him to this room in an old theater. I've aimed to remove all his normal barriers to acceptable social behavior. Its effect is only temporary and is perfectly safe, but it is nonetheless very powerful. Around the room, I've left some theatrical props for him to experiment with. The general public are about to experience Stephen's temporary lunacy.